This podcast is sponsored by The Crazy Cast and Human Wire Productions at human-wire.com. And The Gypsy Haven, Elgin's only witch shop at www.thegypsyhaven.com and onlinewickensupplies.com. Two witches. You mean like witchcraft? Sharing their opinions and beliefs about the practice and theory of magic. Must be the season of the This is Feather. And this is LaFay. And this is the Season of the Witch podcast. Hi. What are we going to chat about this, this, like, our very, very first podcast? This is. This, this is, is our I, numero uno. And we're excited. Our grand initiation. So, pretty much, we want to go into a little description about what we're getting you guys into. This is a podcast that Feather and I decided <laughs> to get into. <laughs> Because we were a little, we felt that there's some knowledge and some information that needed to be spread around. Yeah. Being a shop owner, I am um, like consistently approached and asked for help. What kind and, of shop owner are you first? Well, my husband and I own the Gypsy Haven, which is a small, a little occult witchcraft shop in Elgin, in Elgin Illinois. And uh, we opened about two years ago. And in Elgin... Uh, the zoning laws are very, very strict as to retail only. Okay, we get that. We, we provide all kinds of tools of the trade, and but we're not allowed to perform services due to, I don't know, I, I forget what they call it, some conditional law usage, blah, blah, blah. Fortune tellers not allowed in our town kind of thing. So, but... Lots of people come in needing help, seeking help, you know, and I am new to this podcast thing. I have no idea what this is. I'm not a techie girl. So that's where you come in and totally educate me (laughs) on all of this podcast world, because initially I enjoy reaching out and helping the community and helping the people that come in with genuine concern. So... Pretty much, I mean, the reason why we're doing this, and we hope that everyone's going to really get something out of this, is we want to spread knowledge. We want to spread the idea of paganism, Wicca, uh, heathenism. We want to go into every kind of topic there is, and not just for one skill level. That's our the biggest issue that right. we want to make sure is what's available currently to the modern pagan, whether you're what, regardless of what you believe. It's limited. Unless you have instant access to a coven, to a mass library, not everybody is going to be able to get out there and get the information they need. So this is where we come in. Yeah, I mean, there's tons of books and, you know, certain ways of educating ourselves. However, I, from my own experience, realize that just reading, it only gets you so far. But to actually hear people talk about their experiences, their beliefs, their opinions kind of thing. It it resonates well with me. I apply those things to myself and I'm constantly seeking others to listen to. So I love the idea of this podcast to really reach out and hopefully help change some perspectives and and for all the mm. non-readers out there, all right. of the, the visual learners, <laughs> right. all of the ones that can't pick up a book because they're expensive. Right. They're they have hard. ADD and can't focus. They have ADD <laughs> and they can't focus. They're hard to find, hard to read. Some of the verbiage is not easy to digest or mm-hmm. it just takes forever. This was kind of the idea of trying to combine knowledge and theory and practice into right. something where you can easily gain access to it and i'm so tired of the fluffy kins on the web <laughs> the adorable little witches on their paths she has a witch card. and see unfortunately i mean well fortunately i suppose i should say i have not been exposed to that because again i'm not a techie girl so even plugging on my computer and making it work is like a huge like you know, completed task for me. So looking up these podcast things and finding these fluffy bunnies and stuff, it's new. I'm totally taking your word for it. However, yeah, even the the amount of people that just 
come in that you come in contact with every day that just they, they just blew my mind. And it's like it makes okay. me sick. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> So ideally, the I, what we are trying to do for our listeners, whoever may decide to listen, because we're so excited about just sharing this, is we've got we've got practice and theory. We've got the idea. It, these are our beliefs. These are what we have learned. This is not. We'll try and bring as much information to these podcasts as possible. But this is what we feel and believe. Opinion, opinion. Yes, nobody's word is gospel. So just because we said it doesn't mean that it's true. It just works for us. That has worked for us in the past. And whatever you decide to do on your own, it's okay. So to give a little synopsis about what you guys will be hearing today, we wanted to go into some broader topics, not not to go too deep into things. This is our first podcast, Yay. and there will be many more to come, which will go into much deeper topics, but... Just for the fun of it, we wanted to go into Hollywood misconceptions and then follow on to maybe everyone's, our definitions of magic and how does that work in today and then go further into just covens versus solitary practice, something that a lot of people may or may not get a chance to choose the option for, but it's great to know the differences. And then last big topic that we're going to try and kind of go around is the deity choices which again these are all things to think about mull around there's so many books out there it's hard to just figure out which one you're going to go into and not everyone has 25 years (laughs) before they want the one answer they're looking for so at least we can try and help out a little bit right right just shed a little light and provoke some thought okay so well I I don't know. I I kind of figure that I mean this audience is new to me, so I'm obviously new to the audience. And again, this is Feather, and maybe we should start off by telling them a little bit about ourselves, so they know what kind of crazy chicks they're they're listening to. Absolutely, and I'm thinking you've got. Your story? Mm-hmm. I mean, you've just got more story to tell. Yeah, as, I'm as a little bit older than you. <laughs> and <laughs> you're just, you've got such a heck of a background. So anyway, I mean, obviously everyone's going to come with different skill levels. Feather here, at least, I'd, at least get an introduction so we know what you're about and why it might be worth just, you know, kind of taking some advice from well, someone who knows a little more. Yeah, and it, and it was kind of refreshing to hear that my story is not exactly original. I hear a lot of people that come into the shop that uh, just seem so familiar as to their introduction to this whole path. And basically, in a nutshell, I was I was pretty young. I would say I was about 15, 16 years old. And... I'm originally a native of Houston, and back in my day, we still had newspapers with I think <laughs> with those articles, those. right? <laughs> and like classified ads and stuff. And I don't know what possessed me to do it, but I stumbled across an ad, and uh, this couple, meaning this married male and female, were offering classes on Wicca. And I'm like, oh. Well, at the time, they had also used the word witchcraft. And at a very young age, I didn't know what Wicca was. And honestly, I didn't care. It was that dark, mysterious, sexy witchcraft word that was like, oh, dude, it would be killer to be a witch. These people are going to show me how to be a witch. I signed up. And I went and met these people. And there was, it was actually kind of like a classroom style setting where we had the old fashioned desks, you know, and a chalkboard and everything up front. And Wicca, Wicca 101. Uh, yeah, it, it was it was kind of neat, but I was half expecting like this witch's cave with candles and like sacrifice humans. I, I don't know what I was thinking this was going to be. However, when they started teaching us um, the ways that they practiced, they really left out the whole Wiccan tradition, and they got more into magic. And again, that's that was my happy place. The messed up thing was, is even at a very young age, I felt very strongly that the things that they were teaching, not only myself, but my peers in the class, were very dark. They weren't healthy. Now, again... I like the sexy, mysterious stuff, but I've never had any intention on learning this stuff to harm people. And it seemed as though that was their intention, was to throw out more, 
I don't know. Let, let's show people our power and fucking rule the world kind of mentality. My gut instinct told me to pull away from these people. It, it just didn't, it didn't feel right. And the scary thing was, is when I did try to do it, the backlash was horrible. It was horrible. They, um, they definitely had some experience. And if, if you want to call it power, whatever it was, they, uh, they traumatized me. They uh, scared me so badly that I actually went running back to the Christian faith for many, many of years, just like, oh my God, the, the Wiccans, they're evil. We're, we're all going to, you know, holy shit. <laughs> and, but ultimately, I'm a firm believer that you can't escape your shadow. And I knew that I had a calling. I just didn't know what it was. I was too young and ignorant at the time to really recognize and give it meaning. And over time, that urge came back. And instead of turning to humans, I turned to books and started reading, reading. And then I came across the Wicca word again. I'm like, oh, shit, here we go. It's going to be all evil and sacrificing babies and shit, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> trauma. And in all reality, it wound up being the most wonderful thing. You know, it completely changed um, my existence from everything. And, it, and I'm fortunate that by the time that I again approached my shadow on this issue, I was more mature. So I wasn't looking at it strictly on the magical aspect. It was a new path. It was a spiritual change, a rebirth, Mm -hmm. if you will. So I uh, wound up reading and dedicating myself. And uh, I've been through lots since then. But y'all will hear all kinds of stories as as we go on. It's just going to keep getting deeper. Oh, (laughs) absolutely. But um, anyway, anyway, that was my hardcore thrown into the deep end, scared to death in the beginning, and it's not scary. Just give it a chance. And uh, Well, she turned turn. me into a newt! A newt! <laughs> a newt. <We> got better. <laughs> All right, LaFay, tell me, tell me, tell me. Uh, mine's total opposite. Yeah? Total opposite. I, we, we were moving to California, and I knew... I'd always been interested. I'd always been reading heavily into it. Never, I was raised Catholic, very basic, but luckily my mom was not super pushy on things, and she let me just kind of explore and read and look into stuff, and I had my own tarot deck from an early age. And nice. It, it was just something very, you know, not taboo. Mm-hmm. We didn't talk about it to my grandparents. <laughs> we'll just say that. It's like, besides that, it wasn't, I wasn't ever scared away from anything. I just couldn't find anything. Midwestern Illinois, I mean, before the Gypsy Haven, there was just new age. There was right. just very basic, very minimal. When you search online, you can never know what's, you know, actually real, what's not, you, no matter how many times you look at stuff. So... When my husband and I decided that we were going to move to Los Angeles for uh, just trying for something different, I decided to look up covens just out of curiosity. And ironically, American Horror Story had the coven Mm -hmm. episodes going at that time. (laughs) So I was a little, you know, inspired. (laughs) And uh, yeah, I I looked them up. And I mean, luckily, I just through Witch Fox, I was able to find all of these lists of covens and they all had their little mini descriptions and all very, you know, nice and neat. And some of them had Facebook pages and I just messaged one that said they were eclectic. Mm -hmm. A lot of them had the specific rules and we'll go into that further about more different kinds. But that one felt the most safe to me. It was all female, so I didn't have to be, you know, new groups. Mm -hmm. It was just a, a safer environment at first when you're moving to a brand new city, reaching out to brand new people. And luckily, I mean, the coven leader was so nice, and we had just started talking. And by the time I got there, months, it was like a month and a half later, I had already been talking to her so much that we had had plans to have coffee. And we start talking, and within a month of living there, I'm invited to Ostara. Nice. And it's on my birthday, and it's just this great experience, and I feel more welcome than I had with anyone else. And there's just all of these girls who want to learn and want to Mm -hmm. teach and are just all about it. And I had an immediate group of friends and, you know, I wish we had been able to not, I wish, but you know, we, things changed and we had to move back to Illinois. But within that time, those nine months I had dedicated to Wicca. Mm -hmm. I was a part of the twilight tradition. It was, you know, an eclectic thing and I was on my way and Mm -hmm. I really dedicated. I mean, I, 
took it very seriously. I mean, I was baptized. I had first communion. I took those pretty seriously, and this was a new path. Mm -hmm. So then we came back here, and man, was I... (laughs) At first, I felt like I was back in the desert. Yeah, It was just so disappointing, depressing, whatever it was. And even the things that I experienced here outside of... You know, it developed. Once I found you guys, it was such a different story. But before then, just everything that I was seeing, it was just the same old, same old fluffy, overzealous mentality that just was self-important okay. rather than the real idea of behind it. Whether you're a pagan, whether you're a heathen, it has absolutely nothing to do with the individual. Mm. Or it does, but in a general wide sense, social aspect, it shouldn't be just about you when you're the teacher. So that's, I mean, like, the, I had a very fluffy, happy introduction to a very safe and loving coven who taught me a lot, and all I have is very nice things to say about them. That's freaking wonderful. I'm, I, I was about to say I'm slightly envious, however, I'm, at the same time, I, I know that it wouldn't be where I'm at now if I had not gone through what I went through. And I just kind of take it as I was not ready at that, at such a young age, mm-hmm. 15, 16 years old, I needed to mature because who knows what would have happened if I would have stuck it out and with these people, you know, yeah. I could be a completely different person and you and I would not be sitting here exactly doing what we're doing right now. So, well, maybe you fear witches because you've never met any. <laughs> <laughs> so we've pretty much, we've gone over why we want to do this and we've mm-hmm. gone over a little bit of our backgrounds. And so, I mean, switching gears a little bit on something a little more lighthearted, fun, just (laughs) cue the music, (laughs) Hollywood misconceptions or the generic witch misconceptions, because now we've had one fluffy, fuzzy, happy side, one very not so fluffy side. And I mean, you deal with on a daily basis, I mean, the prosecution in general just based on everything the the number of people that will actually come into the shop and now don't get me wrong i love the the people that are new and that are curious but the people that actually walk into the shop with the expectations of hollywood and I seriously want to go to Hollywood. I want to take a field trip and just smack the shit out of whoever it is that puts this in people's minds that witches actually can levitate. Or we've got fucking magic carpets and okay, brooms and shit. Okay, here's how the shit. process works. You and sit on the broom and we shove yeah, you off the cliff. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's ridiculous, you know. Or get the most retarded questions. And I know that ignorance, you know, it's... It, really all boils down to ignorance and people just falling prey to media and Hollywood, but god damn it, you know, I grew up with Samantha and Bewitched. Okay, and back in the day she rolled her nose. Yeah, see, there she <laughs> is. I, I fucking loved her. Um, and it was real lighthearted. And yeah, I mean, but it wasn't so hardcore where people were out on a mission to become witches, you know, and have these high expectations from what Hollywood is portraying witches to be now. I mean, look at look at these movies that they're coming out with. I mean, what, I will admit, okay, I had The Craft and Hocus okay. Pocus as like huge influences on my teeny bopper age, right? When that, yeah. like, be wanting to be a witch. I mean, like, admittedly, most yeah. girls have this, like, weird period when all of a sudden they want to be witches at, like, the teeny bopper age. Yeah, and see... they're curious. Mine never stemmed from that. Maybe that's why I don't... But but I hear you. Mm -hmm. I get it. You know, and it totally makes sense. And, you know, maybe if I was um, introduced to that type of thing at such an age where, you know, it it made an impression... Yeah. Yeah, an impression on me, but that wasn't the case. You know, I I didn't really start seeing these so-called witch movies until, I don't know, like 18, 19. However, I'm a huge fan of Jack Nicholson. So one of my favorite (laughs) movies was uh, The Witches of Eastwick. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and... They they actually had some good little tropes in there, though. It was, it was, well... Again, I'm tooting Jack Nicholson's horn. I'm just like a hardcore fan. But Cher, you know, and I I don't remember the other two actresses. 
freaking I'm getting old oh, brain fart. I'm too young. Anyway, blah movie. blah blah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I I had that and yeah, saw the craft. I, I've seen some of these newer movies that have been coming out and what it who's been putting out things like is it Netflix that's putting out? Uh Hemlock yeah, um, Grove. Has got it. Yeah. Who who does like Salem and that aunt or bleh. Yeah, WGN does Salem, but then um, American Horror Story. Who does that? That's HBO. Is it HBO? No. Who is that's? Sh- a- oh, whatever. I don't know. One anyway, the- it's not that important. Annie. Um. Anyway, you know, I, but <sighs> some of them, some of the, I. I don't mind watching these movies because every once in a while I can find a little piece that goes, yes, yes, d- explore more on that. Not so much the the talking cats and, you know, <laughs> the and pointing. The, right, the forest comes alive. You know, it's just this crazy notion bullshit. It's FX. <laughs> yeah. Oh, is it okay? <laughs> I went to school for film producing. That's sad. <laughs> All right. See, now I don't feel bad. Uh, yeah. No, I'm... As a kid, I mean, I was constantly exposed to witches as less of a bad thing. I mean, yeah, Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Yeah. Uh, American Horror Story was later, but Hocus Pocus. I I like. I probably know that movie by heart. And see, at this and that point. was a comedy to me. That was just cute as it was. shit. I, 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 I couldn't even stuff. see the witches in it. You know, it was, Bette Miller was awesome. Oh, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. But I, I couldn't take it seriously, seriously no. at all. Most of the movies, I couldn't. You know. I, Although I did find a lot more seriousness actually in the movie The Craft. Yes. The, okay. I actually brought. I I love that because they bring up Manon. Yes. Yes. And I know absolutely nothing about Manon. My guess but. is it's based off of Manon MacLear because they say that he's an ocean god in the movie. Okay. Well, that makes which sense. Celtic ocean god and okay. how they they reference him and everything. That's the only one that seems like it would fit. Okay. And it's I, I, honestly that the yeah the calling of the quarters, mm-hmm. um, even the kind of magic that they do is more fitting. It's not these big grandiose spells and poofs <laughs> of magic and whatever. It's right. you know influence a person's vision right. or things like that. The closer ones. I mean, it's still pretty epic. Yes. I mean, hell, I wish it, it's still Hollywood, but. Yeah, it's, it's probably the only one that I bash the least. And the others, again, I take them as, you know, it's, it's just entertainment. Yeah, yeah I, wish more, can do to you. I, I wish more people could see that and stop coming into the shop thinking that I can teach them how to become invisible. Because I can't. And no, you will never become invisible. No, oh, you're not going to be able to like change your hair color with like the swipe. Sure, of Clara, hands. Clara, <laughs> <Yeah>. L'Oreal. <laughs> All right, so listen to them not. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, like besides just the really, really dumb ones. Um, All right, you know what? I'm going to admit this is showing my age and me really not giving a shit. And a lot of people are going to go, "What? Boo! Harry Potter. Never seen it." Ever, ever, ever. And see that reaction right there. When anybody comes in the shop and they mention Harry Potter, and I'm I'm blatantly totally honest with them, I'm like, you know what? I've never seen it. And they're like, what? You are not a true witch if you've never seen Harry Potter. And I'm like, <laughs> what? No, really? I, you know, I, I've watched The Lord of the Rings, but no, I've never seen Harry Potter. And there is absolutely no actual witchcraft in Harry Potter, as far as I can tell. I mean, there... No. I mean, even okay, the <laughs> wands, maybe the wand construction, but even that's kind of BS and yeah. is totally off the guard. I mean, like, they don't talk about properties of anything. Their potion classes, like, ingredients are completely off and have nothing to do with it. It's, you know, they're tied to their wands and only magic comes through the wand and there's creatures and blah, blah, blah. It's a beautiful realm of the imagination. I, and that's, that's Bless J.K. Rowling for writing it. She she made my middle school and high school years more entertaining by being able to read her books, and then the movies came out. Okay. They're great. They're yeah. great stories, but... They're stories. It's fantasy. Yeah. Okay. 
See, good. All right. I, I don't feel bad for not seeing Harry Potter. Eventually, I will. It will be on my it's, bucket it's list. It's just but a movie to see. Like, I mean, like, regardless. It's like, it, it has nothing to do with whether you're a witch or not. You should probably just watch all it. All right. It's all right. We'll, we'll have a Harry Potter. Harry Potter. <laughs> Harry Potter <laughs> <movies>. Harry <Potty> night. <laughs> Harry Potter night. All right. Yeah. I mean, even even with these these movies, I mean... And, and talking about magic and, and everything else, it, it's kind of crazy because even comparing one movie to the next and finding some seriousness in some movies and just some humor in others, again, going back to the movie The Craft and their definition of magic, mm. you know, and how they incorporate that into, you know, what they're doing for the day, you know, I, I think that everybody's definition of magic is it's different you know and I mean you can flip open I was about to say the, the dictionary see it's <laughs> showing my age here alright I don't know I can what, open my dictionary app. yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah you, you techie people out there with your was it Wikipedia Actually, or something let me follow my hyperlink that I have attached to my notes and I will <laughs> alright <laughs> alright see what your hyperlink says about and, and we'll see if it even lines up with the, with what the movies are saying because I highly doubt it all right, so Alistair Crowley, I don't follow him at all, actually, but he does have a, a decent description of magic. He, he sums it up well, in my opinion. And I'm looking for it. Oh, come on. That have, like, sounds like witch talk to me. <laughs> this is all going to be witch talk, really. <laughs> really? Okay, magic is the art of changing the focus of consciousness at will, is one of them. Real magic is not merely an assortment of skills and techniques. It's more like an open-minded attitude, a blend of interest and dedication, which allows the honest mage to observe, learn, adapt, and invent a unique way of changing identity and reality from within. I like that one. That's a fancy way of putting it. A very long way. Yes. So... I don't know. My definition always has to do with more or less using your intent and will to change the to change the effects of the world around you or to have an effect on that, whether it's prediction or causation, because I feel like that's there's an intent and will that has to be used with in order to make it happen. Yeah, I, you know, even trying to dissect that word and wrap my my little brain around it. That word in the very beginning was just like, oh, God, I, I'm sounding so cheesy. I'm a, I'm a wannabe witch, and I'm going to perform magic. You know, it went a little deeper than that for me in the beginning, and I couldn't wrap my my head around, okay, exactly how is change made, you know? And I'm not one to be led off blind faith, okay? Just because you say that magic exists does not mean that I'm going to believe what you say. However, my logical way of thinking was, okay, let's let's talk some science here. You know, and can we link science with magic? And so I started delving into that a little bit, but I always went with my gut more than anything. And when people would ask me, okay, how does shit get done? You know, is it a spirit? Is it a deity? Is it your wishful thinking? Is it energy fields being manipulated? That is it. That is the key word. And that's the only word that I could verbally vomit to the people was, I don't know how to explain it. It's energy. It's energy. It's just constant flow. And energy exists in all forms. And can we manipulate it? Yes, we just have to learn how to manipulate it. And just like you said, it's all a matter of intent coming from the individual. Can I do harm with energy? Absolutely. I choose not to. Doesn't mean I can't. I choose not to. My intent is to heal and to help. So can, you know, can we make change? Yes. Is that my definition of magic? Pretty, yeah, pretty much. It's more the... um Acknowledging the existence of energy and kind of how it works, empowering myself and working with it to create a desired effect. Does that make any sense? Yes. And I actually have a question to follow up on that because I'm thinking that almost I can almost negate myself, but not quite with the word intent being so important because stones can do magic. Mm hmm. 
trees can do magic. Sure. It's it's all energy manipulation in their own way. And if you look at it, if, even from a kinetic energy prospect, so atoms that are vibrating in a certain frequency, and the whole earth vibrates at a certain frequency, and everything is within a certain plane, and mm-hmm. now we know that there's <clears throat> waves on a plane. And right. Well, they're living things. Right. So does that stone purposely have an intent, or is it more... I'm, I'm wondering how how does a human harness that already existing energy, the the magic that is already pre occurring? Because in nature we know that there's magic because there's that energy, right? And the stone performs magic on me in the way of maybe aligning my chakra, balancing me out, giving me the gift of that emotion, that energy that it's supposed to instill, right? I I probably couldn't answer that as much with stones as I want to with plants. Okay, because I understand some and trust me, I am not, you know, a master on any of this stuff, but plants speak to each other. They do. They, they inform each other when there is uh, bees, insects or birds that are good for them that pollinate. They actually speak to each other. Mm-hmm. You know, trees will do the same thing. I, absolutely. Um, or if they're being harmed. You know, they they warn each other through their own language, which is, you know, it's not like speaking, you know, I talk to you, you hear me. No, it's in their own energy waves, whatever it is to warn the other ones. And then they can protect themselves or they can open themselves up so they can pollinate, blah, blah, blah. All of that is through, I think, just that energy feel kind of like the butterfly effect Mm -hmm. you know it leaves me and floats to you and now you absorb it and now you respond to it i think that we are the same we we have the same concept we do the same thing and we can do the same thing to plants just like by screaming at them absolutely being nice to them by speaking nicely you can do the same thing to water yes you can yes. have water crystallize in different formats based on the emotions that you emit towards it. Mm-hmm. Is that magic? In fact, that it's one of my very, very first spells was working with plants and just understanding. Um, so I have a huge appreciation for plants, and I enjoy meditating with plants. You know, I, I, I'm a stone whore. I absolutely love my stones, but plants, I, I don't know. Anyway. Ah. Okay. Magic. All right. I don't even know if I answered your question. (laughs) More or less, can we include non-intent as a... Would we consider things that natural sources do? So the change in fields, the... I mean, like, now they're saying that trees can also communicate via their roots. Oh, sure. Why not? And so is that form of energy, is that change that occurs, could that be considered magic? In one way or another, or does that word intent have to be included for uh, it to be magic? I'm going to, I don't know, that's a good question. I am going to say, yes, it should have intent. Because if, they, if they're if they doing what they're doing, that's just natural, natural reaction. You know, that's like you blinking or breathing. Mm-hmm. You know, that's not considered magic. It's just something that you do. Does that make sense? It's it does. Just, I want to... I can see what you're saying, and the only manipulation reason... Manipulation of energy. The manipulation. That, that's... The chain... It, well, I still... I, <laughs> I, hmm, the only reason why is... I do feel like there's magic in, in nature, though. I do feel like there is... It just exists as is. Like, when I meditate with a tree, and I can feel the energy that's coming off of that, I feel like I'm just feeling magic. Feeling that energy, because I almost want to equate that energy with a source of magic and the act of performing magic is manipulating what is already there or mm-hmm. using it or um, trying to build it up or trying to manipulate that and to your use. Right. So are you just tapping into the magic that is, you know, above and below and within and with everywhere? <clears throat> well, I believe, you know, it Number one, I think that as humans, without any type of outside help, such as nature or deity, okay, we are capable of massive things, okay? Our brains and our bodies are the most incredible, (laughs) we we are like the coolest thing on the planet. We really, really are. Um, 
we harness the energy to move mountains if, if we really put our mind to it. I'm, again, I'm not heavily educated on any of this, but I like to watch human, human behaviorisms. Mm -hmm. Okay. I love reading books on human psychology and why people do what they do. And knowing that even with self hypnosis, I, I like those types of books too. Knowing that if we really, really put a mind to something, okay, with the proper intent and just enough motivation and drive behind it on an individual basis, we can get shit done. Absolutely. Is that considered magic? Ah, in my book, magic to me is harnessing internal strength, incorporating the magic, if you want to call it that. I call it the power mm -hmm. of nature, the everyday power and existence of nature. Okay. With a deity of choice. That triangle to me, that creates a spell. That is hardcore magic for me. But some people will beg to differ, you know, such as casting the evil eye. You know, you don't need the power of nature or any type of a deity to actually inflict negative energy on somebody. Is that magic? Well, I suppose it is with an ill intention. However, mm -hmm. you, you know what I'm saying? So I think maybe it's a, kind of a tricky word. It, it's so gray. I don't think that there's a black or a white. It's like saying, trying to say God. Yeah, no. It's yeah. like which one, which thing. Yeah. What are we, there's no tangible way of actually quantifyingly defining it. Right. You can't say, well, this substance here is magic. Right. No. So. No. It's uh, Well, I've heard enough. Burner! <laughs> <laughs> Why sentence you hags to be burned at the stake? Be nice. <laughs> we'll be burning eventually. <laughs> So well, there must be someone here we can accuse. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that was deep. I mean, magic is going to have to be something to everybody. Your just your definition, and I like calling it energy because yeah. I can I can scientifically see that I can look at cells. I can digest that. Right. It's yeah. it's easier than just saying it's magical. Right. Yeah, it's, no, it's, that, that's rainbow farts and unicorn, you know, lollipops and rainbows and shit. And that just, I don't, I, whatever. We're, we're kind of anti-fluff on so, this yeah. one. <laughs> <laughs> yes, very much so. Um, yeah, I mean, besides that, once you, me sick. once you have your definition, once you have an idea of what magic is, what do you do with it? Where do we, how can you, you know what you can do with it and then harnessing it. Can you do it with yourself? Can you do it with... <laughs> Play with yourself. <laughs> um, versus or with you, others. With others. Yeah. Because you spent so much time working with yourself, whereas I started out with a group. Yes. And, and having to go back to a solitary after having that group of energy to work with. Um. I'll be perfectly honest. I mean, I, I do not play well with others. I um, I really, really don't. I have um, ah, a very strong distaste for humans in general. I, I tend to be a fan of nature and animals. I am such an animal girl. And I think that's just due to a lifetime of disappointment through humans and allowing that all those experiences to just really taint my my way of thinking, but I am getting better. Um, <laughs> you so kicked, up, kicked me out. No, no, and no, I'd never kick you out of bed. No, it's um, sweet. <laughs> <laughs> I prefer to start off on my own because I think that, that there are different types of learning types, mm -hmm. and when it comes to me learning. Um, I, I tend to be very, very serious, okay? And I'm not a sheep. And I mean no offense by that. It means that I can't sit there, say, say uh, a coven, okay, and just join blindly and then just fit in. I have to learn, dissect, and apply what I want to to myself. That's why I consider myself very eccentric, mm -hmm. you know, eclectic. Um, and most people, they have that ego attached to it that, um, 
I am a high priestess and you should worship me. Blah, I you know. know more than you. And yes. You must kiss and my feet and I will I, maybe teach yes. you the secrets that my grandmother I'm, taught right. me. Right. I am the seventh generation witch of a witch's butthole. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> it just... I can't, (laughs) I can't, no, no, I had to start off by myself. I had to find out what was real to me and what made sense. I'm a ritual girl. I fucking love my ritual and it has to be dead on from A to Z. And I have to put in a lot of homework I mean, typically, I'll tell people that if I am going to do any type of spell work, it takes me about three weeks to put it together. You know, I'm not, you know, off the seat of my pants, I'm just going to, like, whip something together. No, because I'm putting something out in the universe. I expect the universe to take me seriously. I need to take it seriously. Mm -hmm. So, and I can't take humans seriously, but I'm working on it. I am getting better. Um, I've been solitaire for quite some time. The only person that I've ever allowed into that, my world there would be my husband. Okay. But even he and I have completely different ways that we do things and that's fine. I love the fact that he's different than me. You know, um, I am the anal girl. I have like serious OCD and I would, you know, I don't want to subject that to anybody. Yes, I'm anal. I said it. Okay. (laughs) I'm allowed. Shit eating grin on my face. <laughs> um, but over the years, quite honestly, the thought of branching out and working with other serious, experienced people does intrigue me. It does, because you can only go to so many books. You can only, you know, experience so many things on your own. You can only hear so many stories. You want to start experiencing other people's energies wrapped up into your own to see if you can get a different result. So I think it's really cool that you started off with the coven. You know, I mean, I don't... I got... I was... I would read. I would read and read and read and read. And unfortunately, I was poor. So buying books was not really an option. The local library does not carry a whole lot of Wiccan supplies. So, on my end, I didn't want to take the, like, I I wanted to take the time to do it. I mean, that's not the concern. It was more or less, I couldn't find it enough fast enough. And you are like a human sponge, though. I am. You're like, like, I just, I can absorb. (laughs) Yeah, I'd spend many a night just stuck on Wikipedia. (laughs) But that's the thing, is like, I was stuck on Wikipedia. I was stuck on Mm -hmm. these very surface level things. And so, I feel like a lot of new practitioners, people who didn't start out with a good pile of books and a good place to go or the patience to keep looking, Mm -hmm. it's discouraging at first. I mean, like, it can definitely be tough to want to do that. And so that's where I had to, I I was just really lucky that I ended up going to a place where there are so many pagans, heathens, witches, and warlocks and crazy, whatever you want to call yourself. Yeah, because you said that it was an eclectic. Very Coven, eclectic, correct? yes. Right. So they're, they're, I mean, like it was called the Twilight Spiral uh, tradition, belief system, which is just an off base off of another eclectic one or mm-hmm. the, um, the spiral concept. And so when I was looking at Witch Fox, I, there were so many different options. There was Gardnerian, there was Alexandrian, there was traditional, like the Dianics, mm-hmm. which I mean, like I like the, the Dianic a little bit, but I'm not stuck on just one deity. Which was my really big, like, hard moment. Yeah. So I don't bide well with rules when it they, comes yeah. to, yeah, you have to do this. You have to you're follow not a this. Car- Carnelian. Or, is it Carnelian? I think it's Carelian. Carelian, yeah. Carelian, yeah. I'm thinking flowers. <laughs> yes, we are the carnation people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I don't like the idea that it would just, the same reason why I turned away from Catholicism would make me turn away from any specific coven because if you're telling me one thing is right and the rest of them are wrong Wrong. exactly then what am i doing being on another wrong thing how how am i on the the right one now why don't i just become a mormon then right (laughs) please don't yeah no (laughs) Sick. and so i got lucky finding that one I mean, that was just research that was delving in, that was making sure that I was comfortable with the people. And they wouldn't let me in immediately. They had an introductory period. They, oh, that's good. Exactly. They they were smart about it. Mm-hmm. 
And we had a good, smart group of ladies. I mm-hmm. mean, a lot of them were handpicked for very specific reasons. And as time goes on, those kind of covens are great. But there's so many times where the leader stops caring or yeah. members start falling apart or just the the ego of some of these people that put themselves in charge of things. That's the scary part. And that that's actually real disheartening, too, because... You know, even coming into the shop, you know, I speak with almost everybody that comes in, and several of the ladies that I've spoken with have said, yes, I've, you know, I've been a member of a coven, blah, blah, blah. And I'm just, just curious, you know, how was the experience? And it, I would say at least 90% of them, maybe even more, a very, very small percent would say, yes, um, I left the coven due to distance, you know, I had to travel, had to move, you know, which was unfortunate. Logistical reasons. Right. Absolutely. But it was the other 90, 98% that said that it just started to fall apart. And yes, like you said, a lack of leadership or just, they just started turning into twats. Mm-hmm. You know, seriously. Like the all female it was like, ones. Yeah, too much estrogen going on. And yeah, everybody hits the rag at the same time. <laughs> and it's like, you know, I used to teach in an all female school. You know, it, I taught aesthetics. And it's not that we weren't open to males, we just didn't have any males. So that was a whole lot of estrogen. And it, yeah, not really, not at that time. Um, and, oh, my God, I want to smack the shit out of, like, 16, 17 people by the end of the day. It was too much estrogen. Mm-hmm. But the thing that I don't understand about that in comparison to, like, covens is the fact that covens, we're, we're talking about a spiritual path, right? And trying to be the best that we can possibly be and lead by example every day of our existence, even if it means stepping out of the so-called human realm and becoming more spiritual creatures. Okay? Mm-hmm. And that that process is what makes me feel good and happy Cleansing. with this path. Absolutely. So now you're talking about just it's gone from a coven to a group of girls all on the rag at the same time, being human and tearing each Cutty other apart. Bullshit. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, like, like my coven had it, too. I will fully admit it. There was some bullshit catty moments. Yeah. But luckily the inner circle, the really, the, the, the collective of them could put that aside. Yeah. Do, does the nation have a bunch of collections of women that can actually put their shit aside for yeah. <laughs> how many esbits and sabbats and things, get togethers and planning? I mean, like this is, it's a time, time consuming. This is not easy. Dedication. Right. Like, this is a lot of time you know, researching and looking into it's things. It's a lot of sacrifice. You spend a lot, a lot of your life in this. And, you know, it's not to scare people away, no. but to get that fulfillment that you're looking for, it takes a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. Right. And then you absolutely. get those really cool moment, moments right. that make it all worthwhile. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, that that's why I always say that it's the path work that is excruciating, but the most rewarding. Absolutely. I mean, because it, it, it's seriously everything that you do, you think about it, you know, and again, tonight I'm going to bet, going to bed a better and stronger person than I did last night. You know, that that's part of my path and that's what keeps me happy. And even with the people that are just like, well, screw the path, fuck the path. I don't want to be a wick and I just want to be a witch. Well, you know what? Unfortunately, to be a good witch, it takes su- fucking sacrifice and time, too. Okay? There's a lot of shit to learn. And no, you cannot just, like, poof, start doing magic and just call yourself a witch. Because you're going to fall flat on your fucking face. You're going to have and, bad recoils. Oh, my God. Out, oh, know? my God. And, you know, and your ego is so big. And, you, you know, you're stating, oh, that's not going to happen to me because I'm the seventh daughter of a seventh daughter. Fuck you. That's you know? like witch talk <laughs> to me. <laughs> I'm almost half, and, and it's just the darker side of me. I can't wait for you to come back in and go, what happened? I don't understand what happened. It's because you're a stupid twat. You know, you're so full of yourself thinking that it's easy. You know what? It's not fucking easy. You're breaking into this. You're, you're changing things right. with your will. And there's a million and a half things oh that could God. go wrong. Oh, my God. 
I mean, the reason why you take three weeks to do a spell is because you have to think about every implication, every possible outcome, everything that could go wrong, would go wrong, backfire, come back at you. Harm none, do what you will. Okay? That, that's one of the rules. And that, for such a simple rule, it forces you to think. It really, really does. And stop being a selfish prick for a second. Everything that you do affects everything around you. And that's not just performing magic. That's life. Yeah, you have to start thinking absolutely. about your carbon footprint. Energy. energy does that. <laughs> yes. You have to start thinking about all the crap that, I mean, like, if you really, I don't want to say you should be, by no means, I love meat. I will not be a vegetarian. I'm sorry. I can't do it. Nope. I like the taste of a steak. Yep. But the idea of trying to be conscious, trying to be more aware, cleaning, trying to do anything so that it's not just when you decide to throw on the robe and be a witch for that moment. It's a lifestyle. Yes. We have found the witch! May we burn up! <laughs> <laughs> and don't let this be discouraging either because you know what? Being a witch is actually really cool. It's a blast. It is cool. It is empowering. It is mysterious. It is sexy as fuck. It really is. It, it changes everything about you and once you change everything around you changes it gives wonder to the world absolutely but it takes it takes dedication it takes a lot of blood sweat and tears to to get good at the craft and i'm by no means an expert at this i will totally admit that i'm still i'm still i mean i'm still working on some of the basics still i would love to get better at this i would love to get better at you know energy i would you know want to improve my divination at times there's so many things that what i yes i'm a sponge but that's what's exciting to me is this is a consistent improvement it's a more there i'll never run out of things to learn about and get better at i can never say that i've mastered something if that day comes you need to hang up your witch hat yeah, because that, you know, you are no longer. No, you will go to your grave learning and getting better and stronger. You will never, ever have mastered any of this. And you can become the best, most badass witch you want. <laughs> but that doesn't mean shit. As long no, as it you really can. doesn't. It just means that you have control over your daily activity. Yeah, there is That's still it. a witch among us. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, when it comes to it, I was kind of talking about, you know, even with magic, you know, how I incorporate um, the power, if you will, of nature and of what people will call deity. You know, it's you want to talk about some deity choices? Yeah, the God, and, the and goddess, the, the everything. I mean, I mean, it, it is definitely an opinion, you know. Oh, sorry. It is definitely an important um, aspect to what I call magic, and maybe not everybody. I I do know some people that aren't don't necessarily feel as though they need to speak with a deity to perform magic, and that's perfectly fine. But it goes even outside of magic. I mean, it's like even on a spiritual path. Who the fuck do you pray to? <laughs> yeah, Who it's helps it's you. okay. Spinning wheel of which deity do I decide to pray to today, or? Right. What strikes your fancy is pretty much when my my coven, who is eclectic and pretty much just gave you the option to do whatever you wanted. Mm -hmm. That was great. And it was also huge, a huge choice. And I didn't pick until I almost left until I was we were moving and it finally came to me. And luckily, it's not like I have dedicated to one deity. I will never Until the one decides that that's absolutely it. But it's not like I am only ever going to pray to one deity. I can incorporate whoever I need at that time. If I choose, if I want, and I have no specific reason to grab somebody else for a better reason, Mm -hmm. Freya, the Norse goddess. And honestly, a lot of it just came down to interesting circumstances. She kept (laughs) popping up in different occasions. My husband brought her up even before... My coven decided that we were going to honor her at the next ritual that he was invited to. So she's showing up in his dreams. She's coming to me in a whole bunch of different ways. And she felt right to me. Okay. But that was my personality traits. That was who I feel comfortable with and can learn from. Right. So she's got strengths and weaknesses that I can attribute to myself. That's... I... You and I are, are a lot alike when it comes to that. Um, 
again, not being a fan of humans in general and even boiling down to I, I'm going to call it human mythology for a moment. You know, the stories of the gods and goddesses and everything like that. It just, it never resonated well with me. I didn't, I didn't want to put all my faith into what was once, you know, considered a human, even though they're just fable. All right. I just, I couldn't do it. Um, I do have a lot of uh, Native American blood on my mother's side and, um, I've been fascinated with my, uh, I'm actually Onondaga, Iroquois, Monotomy, Indian. Not not 100%, you know, just, just a portion. Your tribe. And yes, that's my tribe, my East Coast tribe. And so um, the Native American ways have always fascinated me. And their um, term of spirit for, you know, the, the almighty, the great void, you know, the, the creator of all, that resonates with me. I myself, no, I, I will not call it God or goddess. Those are, you know, aspects of spirit, mm -hmm. the, the gender, the polarities of spirit. Spirit is the ultimate of all. When it comes to specific deities, um, breaking down of deities, I'm an animal girl. I always have been. When it comes to spell work, I go to animal spirits every single time. Okay, I will not go to human deities. However, on a daily basis, just like Miss LeFay here, um, I have two, two deities, one male and one female. But they are aspects of me. It was like, you know, and kind of the same thing. I, it was just a piece of information with my male, who was Lou, the Celtic mm -hmm. Lord Lou. And it just happened by chance. Um and it was the Celtic astrology that um, I found out that my Celtic lord was Lou. So I started doing some research on him, and he's freaking amazing. He is my my creative side, my artsy craftsy. He is um, my joy of accomplishment. Okay, and. However, I had a serious issue with um, only having a male deity and not a female, okay? Because coming from a Christian background where it was hardcore patriarchal into this new pagan umbrella, which tends to be more matriarchal, I believe in the polarity of both gender. So I had to find a so-called suitable mate for Lou, and that took a long time. That did not come naturally to me. But when I stumbled across the Morrigan, uh, now she, not only does she go hand in hand with Lou, they, they work together wonderfully. She's a badass. She's a badass. She is my strength. I don't have to pray to her for strength. I am strength. She is me. I am her. Mm. And just the whole story behind her is wicked cool, you know? Um, so just just like what you said, they're, they're already... It, it is you. Mm -hmm. And I have both my deities at the foot of my bed on, on a vanity. So every morning I wake up and I open my eyes and scratch my head and I look over there. I realize that I have a choice. What kind of fucking day am I going to live? Who am I going to be today? You know? And am I going to be the human? Yeah. You know, all boring and zombie land out there. Or am I going to be a better Wiccan a badass you know, pagan, creative yeah you know force. eclectic witch that a lot of people are afraid of <laughs> I actually think it's kind of cute <laughs> not that I want to be feared it's just keeping the ignorant people away from me and I'm, and I'm okay with that the power of Christ compels you yes <laughs> thank you for that I don't know I mean I love the idea of animals as like a raw immediate force yes just straight up and we've talked about this in the past and it's always I always find it interesting because what draws me to humans is what pushes you away from them because mm -hmm. they are imperfect mm -hmm. and all of these archetypes of these basic characteristics the flaws and the positives the hubris comes with you know being bashed in the head because you were a <laughs> dumbass and couldn't get over it or all of these consistent human stories that are told throughout time and location whether it's on you know 
an island in the middle e- in the middle of the ocean or in the Native American sense. Mm-hmm. They follow an archetype and behavior systems. I mean, Loki and Coyote. Sure. You've got these dualities, or not dualities, the, these, these mirror images of these behavior patterns. And I like being able to incorporate a more human aspect of it because then I can just match it to how I'm filtering it. You relate to it? Right. It, it, okay. helps, me, it helps me relate to it. Whereas with Native Americans and animals, like you, you've said, they just are. Mm-hmm. That's just what they are. Right. And there's no way of... I mean, there is. I mean, like I, I can feel like a coyote or I can mm-hmm. feel like those moments are coming in, but it definitely doesn't have the, you know, what would Freya do? <laughs> Yeah, I think my <clears throat> again, I only I really only go to animal spirits outside of my my animal totems, mm-hmm. okay, that are, that I'm surrounded with by daily when it comes to magic because in my mind I another and this is just another tack on okay, I have my own personal power that I'm bringing to the table for this spell, okay? I've got my shit going on, right? Now I'm going to add to it with the awesome power of badger. Badass motherfucking badger, okay? And they are powers of destruction. I mean, but not all negative. I mean, every animal is pure in instinct. They are kind and cruel. There is no such thing as an evil animal or an holier-than-thou animal that does no wrong. It's nature. Absolutely. You cannot have good without bad or vice versa. So I acknowledge that power I don't want to relate to it because it's different than me. All right? It is its own entity that I am bringing to the table, not to join into me, but to come with me. Does that make sense? Yeah. And and then you bring in the ultimate power, the creator of all of us, which I call spirit. You know, instead of calling upon, like, my Morrigan or my Lou, I call upon... Spirit, the, the whole thing, the Gaia, whole thing. whatever we want. Absolutely, the the grandmaster of everything. You know, whatever you want to call it, that triangle. Because I am definitely not spirit, okay, and I am no, <laughs> I'm no match to this alligator or this bear energy. It is what it is, and I am a human. I am capable of certain things, and it is capable of certain things. So that distinction between the three makes a fucking tornado of intensity. Intensity. Does that make any sense? It does. And it's it's funny how it works. You've got a very not Catholic, but kind of Catholic feel going with the Mm -hmm. the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost Mm -hmm. idea. But it works because I'm looking at it like the hard versus soft polytheism idea where you've got these character not the characters but you've got these entities that have their own specific energy mm-hmm. but you acknowledge the fact do, do you would you agree that that energy that is being represented through alligator would be oh shit i can't think of like a, a good reference for alligator so i'll do coyote and loki again because okay. that's a really easy one so would you say that coyote is the same energy that if you had called upon loki or is it Loki is totally different than Coyote? I see the relation, the resemblance of the two, but no. No, I don't because humans and animals, I mean, everybody says, okay, humans were once animals, blah, blah, blah. We are an evolved form of animals. Mm-hmm. Now, I still make a very firm distinction between being a human and being a four legged creature that, you know, has fur and, you know, romps through the forest. Okay. Okay, so. They are very different, and again, when I think of, like, Loki, okay, the story of Loki, the the imperfections of Loki, all the lessons learned of Loki, to me, Loki is limited, all right, whereas Coyote is not. Coyote is 100% Coyote. It is all that it knows how to be. There is no imperfection to Coyote. To me, there's imperfection in humans. But that is my own block in my brain. And that's okay. No, it's just different. It's It's just how people believe differently. And that's great. I'm curious, though, on... Because it almost feels like you've got a semi-hard polytheism. Mm. Just because I can't... I don't make that same distinction. 
I feel like that energy source, whatever it is, there are just the archetypes so that it represents itself through the filter that you see it. On an everyday basis, absolutely, because I but believe when you that call we upon all, it. Yes. Okay. When in existence, in everyday breath, we are all the same. We are all one. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Whether it's stories or humans or animals or waters or butterflies, we all come from the same thing. Okay? Right. I'm just making a difference between everyday existence and spell work. And that's a huge that's difference for to me know the difference. Yes. yes. And I wouldn't, I would never call upon Loki and Coyote at the same time thinking that I would <laughs> <laughs> try it. Ooh, that would just be bad in a lot of ways in, in general. Be but because I can't think of any out of a better example besides those two, those two that have a good animal to human correlation. Yeah. I wouldn't call upon those things and expect one thing to show up. Like, if I called those two, I still feel like it would be two different sources of energy that would show up. So I, I do yeah. get it now. Yeah, it's they're, they're very different to me. Oh, that's... But Yay. <laughs> as far as the hard polytheism... Because uh, I think you and I have had kind of a conversation yeah. about this before. I've only ever really... met one person that truly believed it. I am, you know, I would like to think, and, and maybe you'll shed some light and give me a different perspective, but I'd like to think of myself as more of a soft, almost mono. Okay. Yeah. Kind of on the same sense of the, it is one, but many. Yes. That's more where I sit on things also. I can't... I have to make it work somehow. And so... And do you guys know the difference? Should we... Probably just do like a quick quick little... (laughs) So... We we don't want to lose you. I completely forgot. Okay. You want to give them the definition? Sure. Real quick. Yeah, okay. I mean, like... (laughs) Pretty much hope that everybody who's listening knows what monotheism is, but if not, it's okay because I was yeah clueless at one point too. It's like what the f- dictionary typical, but anyway, monotheism. Mono meaning one, theism meaning belief. One belief. You believe in one deity. That's it. So generally, that's God. That's Allah. That's whatever. Soft versus hard polytheism. That's where it gets a little more complicated because most. I'd say 99% of everyone that I've met still falls under what they would call a soft polytheistic belief, which is the idea that many deities as uh, many deities are the aspect of a greater force. Um, what you've been mentioning recently is the idea that it's all almost one. You're not quite monotheistic, but you believe that the different those different things are the, themselves, but they can kind of not in ritual, but in everyday life, be able to say that that it's a mix. Anyway, hard hard polytheism or reconstructionist Hellenism. So big words, whatever. All of the gods are separate. Every single aspect, every single god has its own identity and personality. Mm-hmm. You could call upon every single member of every single Greek and Roman pantheon and Diana and Artemis would show up. Bacchus and Dionysus would show up. Zeus and Jupiter would show up, and they would all be separate. I've only ever met one person that fully could believe that, and mm. I can't. I don't. I, I, I wouldn't ever disagree with her. Just saying she's wrong, but I can't. No, we believe. we all have it, and it's whatever makes her happy. That that's how she learns. That she how she absorbs, and that's how she applies. And good for her. It, it doesn't, you know, it really, I don't give a shit. I do, go worship a cow. You know, they really. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's, it's, yeah, I mean, like, uh, I'm, it's, it's a hard thing to try and to debate. Because when you're trying to debate theology and religion in the first place, how can you ever tell anyone that they're wrong? We None of us know what really is right or wrong in the situation. It's whatever makes you feel comfortable at that point. Even when we have I people... Oh, God, whose <laughs> side we're on? <laughs> Even Brownie p- points. Yeah. People that come into the shop and kind of ask, to, it's like, okay, well, you're, you know, I I believe in God, or I believe in a goddess, and what is it this... You're, you're talking about deities, and what is all this stuff? And 
really the only way that I can verbally explain it to them to to the best of my ability is thinking of what I call spirit as a massive diamond with a million facets. You know, all this, you know, mm. and those are the facets that when you shine the light, you know, glitters and it is just massive, a million different different facets. And each one of those facets is a personality, a character of spirit. And each one of those has a name, has a name, whether it's a human name, an animal name, a plant name, a stone name, a color. Yeah, absolutely. It is all the same. So that's why I say that in every day we are all one. So, yes, you've got your Loki, you've got your coyote. There's got to be a tree and a stone no, that would kind of like, you whatever, know, whatever the genetic absolutely fairies and, you know, that kind of shit. Imps. That's all a facet with different names, but it's all the same thing. It's the same energy. It's putting out the same type of energy. So, you know, when we call upon so-called deities, you're looking for a particular energy at that moment in time. You know, to call upon spirit and hold, that is calling upon everything. And that's huge. That is massive. That is larger than we could ever fucking fathom. That's why with spell work, you know, I break it down. Break it down. You know what? I want this done this way. Today we're going to use some mouse. I love my fucking mouse. Mouse (laughs) energy rocks, you know. Um, It depends on how I want to get something delivered. So, um, it really... It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you call it. It doesn't matter what you believe. Like I said, worship a cow. Worship your fucking cat. I don't care. I just... It makes me feel good. It makes me feel good to feel good to know that you believe in something. It's something. the fulfillment that you're looking for. I yeah. Mean, I mean, as long as it's not... As long as it harms no one else... Right. Do whatever the hell you want. Yeah. That's... I mean, what atheists don't believe in any type of a higher being, correct? Am I correct in saying that? Yeah, that there's nothing. That I right. think they believe. I, I think they worship science. Okay, and you know what? There's absolutely no, nothing wrong with that either, as long as they're happy and they're not fucking with anybody else's world. You know, then that that's fine. They're absolutely just don't try to fucking convert me. You know, that's really, <laughs> but we're, we're going to go, yeah, really go off like on a, a tangent with on that. And I don't, I don't want to go off on a tangent because yeah, the, the people that try to convert me, I just want to set them on fire. It's so much fun though. Yeah. Now, I mean, now that I've actually come out of the broom closet, it's a lot easier than <laughs> just trying to like be polite and nice about it. I can actually just be, make them uncomfortable. Well, yes, I will agree that that is a lot of fun too. Yeah. Yeah. But at the same time, too, usually they're drawn to you for a reason. So don't invite them to you if you intend on picking a fight. Oh, that's yeah, not cool. No, that's it's no fun to have to do that. But it's but the evil bitch in me sometimes says, "Yeah, bring it on." I'm up for a really on. good fucking debate, yeah. you know. And and yeah, I don't. I don't. That's cave. why we have this now. We can just right, spew exactly. and let it all out. <laughs> but what I'm thinking, I hopefully we've kind of given a general idea of where to start. Just basics just the simple idea of there's a lot out there oh my god this is huge yeah there's so many there's so many choices there's so many different things that you can get into i mean like this is just a drop in the bucket of a million different topics to think about and start learning what what gets you excited what makes you feel like a witch you know and to, to close it off with with that topic in mind um, you said earlier how you had your movies and stuff. You mm-hmm. had Hollywood to fall back on and it made you feel all witchy. Mine was actually a memory and it didn't have anything to do with Hollywood whatsoever. And That's nice it and was, clean. <laughs> and I was at a very, very young age and it was just a situation. You know, it was looking at something that was real life and looking at it. It was um, actually an apartment that was in front of me, but the timing the time of day, the ambiance, everything, and knowing that the females inside, for some reason, I always associated my mom as being witchy because she looked a lot like Cher, and you know, <laughs> and you know, and my mom was beautiful, and and even going into this particular, you know, this this setting, the women that were inside were witchy, and they weren't doing anything. 
they weren't witches, you know. They they never talked about anything. They, I think they were in their smoking joints. You know, mm-hmm. I don't know what the fuck they were doing, but all I know is the feeling. The feeling of it felt like just one of the most amazing, magical things I've ever felt. And I will never, ever lose that feeling. So even when it comes to stepping outside of the human realm and into my witchy mode, for me, it really is about ambiance. Clothes, clothing, music, fucking candles, incense burning and shit. My jewelry. Your Rich, jewelry? I have jewelry that is very specifically ritual. Yeah. Or things that I will only wear during that time. I've got ritual right. clothes that are very special to me. Right. And bought them specifically just so that I wouldn't wear them on a day-to-day basis. Right. But I feel special when yeah. I put my special ritual dress out. Oh, it's, absolutely. It's, I feel, I'm such a dork about it, but... Those moments, it's like gearing up for a game. It's yeah. like you, you get into that mindset. Right. And I, it is actually the perfect, I think, stepping stone for anybody out there that's kind of, you know, I'm reading, I'm learning, I'm interested, but I don't know what to do. I don't know how to start. I don't know how to physically do anything, and I'm scared I'm going to do something wrong or blah, blah, blah. You know, instead of thinking so damn hard, try something fun and simple and think about stepping out of your, you know, what, whatever, you're Julie, you're no longer Julie. Now you're Brianna, you know, and creating that ambiance, create the look, create the feel, you know, and it, it actually becomes addicting. It is. <laughs> It started off with just meditation, and then it uh-huh. turned into meditation with music, and then it was meditation, music, and incense, and then mm-hmm. it was meditation, music, incense, and this special, you know, sitting in on a, like a, a, an area rug or something. Right. Like it, <laughs> <laughs> it just develops, and you start to feel different when you get into that mode. Mm-hmm. If it means going into a different room, setting music up, whatever it is. Oh, yeah. Come up and make, make a freaking, what, what do you call them nowadays when you have a compilation of music? We playlist. <laughs> playlist on your iPad or iPad, something like iPod, that? iPod, I All right. Yeah. Apple. What, yeah. Like, all right. Old lady here. So back in my day, I made fucking cassette tapes. Um, <laughs> a music that made me feel witchy, you know? And every single time I heard this shit, it just, it was a trigger. And it just put me in that mind frame. Find your witchy theme song. Yeah, yeah. Find some some shit that just like, and it's not like you're going to be running around saying, look at me, I'm a witch. No, it's, it's not a matter of, you know, making the world recognize you as to what you were trying to become. It's actually feeling what you are becoming, you know, and it's, again, it's, it's addicting. Don't be surprised if you try to get all of your girlfriends to do the same thing with you because, you know, it's just happiness loves company. Um, but what do you what do you think, Lafay? We that that's our challenge to you guys. That's gonna be a good a good for, starter. Yeah. It's something that everyone can come back and feel like, okay, are you a part of this? Are you you're on your path. We're gonna keep going into more and more stuff. I mean we're gonna have oh, some yeah. hopefully not it's not homework because we're not gonna check your homework. No. But no, we're going to try it, and share. Do it, do it, do it, do it. It's like peer pressure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just things to help. Things to help on the path. And this is that's the whole point of this podcast in the first place. It's just it to help sounds like witch talk to me. <laughs> There's a lot Stop of homework. fucking witch I'm smack you. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's that's the goal, and that's what we're going to keep doing for everybody here. All right. Yeah, we, we probably... Yeah, stop that. <laughs> We've talked your face off for quite a while. I hope you feel comfortable with us. We look forward to uh, speaking more to you in the very near future. Sharing our ridiculous oh, and different oh and varying God. wide beliefs, stories, and musings. I'll call, yes. I'll call them that. My, my weird... 2 a.m. ideas that show up and I have to mm-hmm. talk about it. Yeah, or me like going on about experiences in the shop because people never cease to amaze me. Just <laughs> <laughs> you'll hear me Suck. ramble, but uh, no, I love them. I love them. I love them. I want to help them all and I just hope that they're happy and yeah, even if just leaving feeling a little bit better, it makes my day. So. All right, LaFay, shall we say goodnight? All right, Feather, it's 
A very good night for everyone, and thank you so much for listening to the very first episode of Season of the Witch Podcast. Yay. Good night. Good night.